Good day. Peter Toy from ECMS. We specialize in employment equity, ensuring that designated employers become and remain in total and full employment equity compliance pertaining to the latest legislation. Today I will discuss the correct constituency of your employment equity committee. As per section 16, read in conjunction with section 17 of the Employment Equity Act, designated employers must take reasonable steps to consult with representatives of employees representing the diverse interests of the workforce when conducting an EAP analysis as well as HR policies and practices when you prepare your employment equity plan and when you complete your EA2 report for submissions. Please bear in mind the constituency of your EE committee need to include employees from senior management, middle management, junior management, semi-skilled employees as well as unskilled employees. Those employees will be deemed representatives and they will represent the specific occupational level. Once you have identified through a formal nomination process the employees being now the representative of that particular occupational level, your EE committee will need to be constituted on an additional African male, African female, colored male, colored female, Indian male, Indian female, white male, as well as white female. Please bear in mind the EE committee representative representing the occupational level is not allowed to represent an additional race and gender as well. In other words, one committee member is not allowed to wear two caps. In addition to that, should your company employ disabled, you need to have at least one disabled person in your committee representing the disabled. And then should your company be majority unionized, Preferably a shop steward will be involved in your committee representing the relevant union.